terrorist, you're this, you're that, and you can't really take it to heart, but there's been many struggles that just come with being a believer. These challenges definitely made me stronger in many ways. It's difficult to con constantly remind yourself what you're going through might not be the worst thing right now. And it's easy to get to the level of despair, even though that's considered one of the worst sins to actually commit. And it's so easy to preach, but once you try to actually implement things in your life, it becomes far more difficult. And it's definitely changed me a lot though in the past four years now. The first three years of university were also my first three years of being Muslim. And I had a lot of support because there were mosques all over the place. The main issue was in my third year, I lived right downtown Toronto and I lived beside a Wahhabi masjid and I'd go there all the time to pray and never really had issues at first, but then there started being many issues and they'd start trying to push their beliefs on me and tell me that I shouldn't pray in this mosque and that I, one person even told me, I'd rather marry a Jew or a Christian than pray next to you. And like there's been many different struggles anyways, but it's just something that you have to accept as a follower of the Ahlubayt. Uh, within the Christian community anyways, the church I grew up in for many years of my life. I know the pastor still and my family still goes to the church. So once in a while on a Sunday I'll still go with them to the church, but I've had to tell my family once in a while, like, I'm just going to sit out while they're playing the music and stuff because for me personally I can't stand to listen to them singing about how Jesus is God and it just really affects my heart so I'll still go with them to church I'll listen to the lecture and stuff and try to talk to different people as well but there's also a pastor that lives across from me at the moment and he's been there since I was really young and recently I ended up talking to him because when I was in grade six, he ended up donating Christmas presents to us from his church because my parents had just been divorced and my mom couldn't afford anything. So his church decided to get together and give us presents. So I decided recently like to thank him and everything for all that he did at that time way back then that was absolutely unnecessary too. And we've gone out for coffee a few times and I've given him the perspective about Islam and he's talked about Christianity and I gave him a copy of the Quran which he's now read through as well and he has actually learned a lot from me surprisingly about Islam that he had no idea about simply due to the fact that he grew up in Peterborough and only ever knew Christianity. The one thing I've had an issue with in the Shia Masjid was you'll hear people say that Dawah should be done through your actions, not so much through handing out a book or sitting on the street preaching to people. But the problem is there's very few people whose actions can stand up to the test of actually showing what Islam is. So many people will look at your actions and if you expect them to judge you by your actions to accept Islam, then you shouldn't say something different when you say don't judge me by my actions because I'm doing this wrong, judge Islam itself. So there's been a big contradiction there within what some of the mosques are trying to get people to do for dawah. So I'll still go with the Sunnis, the Salafis, even the Sufis as well, hand out some general books about Islam once in a while, a Quran to someone who's interested. And it's the fact that you need to actually actively be out there speaking to people like the prophets did, like various apostles did, like the Imams. Whoever is trying to spread the religion, it didn't happen simply by walking by someone and them finding you to be a nice person because I could find the Pope to be a nice person. It doesn't mean it makes it any more right. Knowledge is obviously <laughs> the fundamental point for Dawah. If you don't have the knowledge, then you're spreading false information. So if they could even focus on one small book that a bunch of people could read to know how to answer different questions for people, then it would really assist in spreading the word of the Ahlubayt. To spread the knowledge of Islam through social media is very beneficial if you know how you're going to do it because there's many people who try to do it but they only end up in arguments and it doesn't actually achieve anything. And social media can obviously help in many different 
aspects. I currently have a blog at theislamicperspective.org, which is currently a new topic each week that comes on the Friday and slowly updating the website to add ebooks and different topics from reverts and all different topics. It's just a work in progress, but social media is definitely very beneficial if you know how to use it properly. For those considering becoming Muslim, a couple of words of advice would be to obviously read. That's, it seems very obvious, but it's really important. Many people don't realize and think, I'll listen to this YouTube lecture here, or I'll just take whatever I hear from other Muslim people, and that'll lead you very astray, which in my first two years of converting became a big problem, just accepting any information that was given to you. And I highly suggest that you go directly to the best sources you have available, whether it be the Milana that is nearby, or even if you have to travel 100 kilometers to get to the Milana, they will give you much better answers than just typing in on Facebook, what do you guys think of this or that? A final message for the viewers who are already Muslim would be that they should actually focus on what they're being taught within Jumma, within a Thursday night program, not just sit there, come for the community like many people do. If you take one thing out of a lecture and implement that in your life, it can drastically change every other aspect of your life. For me, I love to encounter Muslims all the time. I love encountering non-Muslims and talking about Islam, bringing up the topic no matter where I am, what time of day, it doesn't matter. Since I live in Peterborough at the moment, there's very few Muslims, so when I see a Muslim, it makes me extremely happy to see them. And they immediately come to me and start talking to me about why I converted, like many other Muslims all the time, and about so many different things.